So fellow Toastmasters, there was a poll taken recently in California. They called up a thousand people and asked them if they thought illegal immigration was a serious problem. And 21% of them said, yes, it's a very serious problem. And 79% said, no problema. <laughs> Gentlemen, we have a problem in our country. We have a big problem. And I'm going to talk to you about that. And it's a problem that is going to require that we do something to fix it. And we can talk about it, we can talk about all the problems, but fixing it is going to require some willpower. And first, I'm going to tell you exactly what this problem is. We have a health problem where this is San Francisco. And these are needles that are being picked up in San Francisco. And if any of you have actually gone up to San Francisco, you'll see it's a massive problem. There's needles everywhere. And I'm actually going to put in the bottom of all of my slides how you can go and verify everything that I'm saying. The cost of just cleaning up the needles over a 14-month period of time in San Francisco for a 10-man team is $916,000. This is just one example of the problem that we have to address. Now what I am going to do is take the information I got from my evaluation from Michael last week where he said, I have a tendency to give too much information. And what <laughs> I got out of that is that I need to tell you what I'm going to tell you, then tell you, and then summarize what I just told you. Because I've got a lot of material. But I have every confidence that you guys are smart enough, I have faith in you that your attention span is long enough to stick with me during this process and that it won't be addled by any type of California pot addiction. So, let me go ahead and introduce you to what I'm going to introduce you to. There's a huge drug epidemic in San Francisco with the needle pickup team. Second, there's a free needle exchange program that sends a mixed moral message. Third, drug abuse is responsible for a quarter of the AIDS and HIV problem. Half of it's caused by homosexuality, but that's a different speech. I'm not getting into that. Four, the Catholic Church is against free needle exchanges in four treatment centers. Five, there were 70,237 USA deaths from opioid overdoses last year. 70,000. It's a huge number. This number is three times the deaths from terrorism in the entire world each year, just to put that in perspective. It's 11 times the deaths from terrorism in Iraq, 11 times the deaths from terrorism in Afghanistan, and 35 times the deaths from terrorism in Syria. These are huge numbers. Number seven, the 70,000 USA deaths is more deaths each year than the 10 years of the Vietnam War. The whole 10 years of the Vietnam War during the most deadly there was 58,000 killed in action. That's over 10 years. That's 5,800 a year. There's 12 times the KIA rate from illegal drugs in this country each year than what we experienced in Vietnam. Drug cartels are killing 29,000 Mexicans each year using American drug money to do it, and oftentimes American AR-15s. The 164,000 Mexicans killed since 2007 is two times all the civilian deaths in Iraq, eight times all the civilian deaths in Afghanistan, and the grand majority of these opioids are coming across the border. You'll have people tell you it's not coming across the border. I'm going to show you a neat little, well, it's not neat, it's a horrible graph that shows that that's where it's all coming from. The drug cartels have corrupt distribution network throughout the entire United States. The Guzman conviction is only tip of the iceberg. And the cost of opioid use disorder and overdoses is $78 billion in the year 2013. And you compare that to the $5.7 billion that Donald Trump is asking for a wall. It's 13 times the amount of carnage is being done to our society every year from illegal drugs than would be saved if we actually built that wall. There's 400,000 illegal immigrants each year who come into this country. They vote three to one, Democrat, versus Republican. And I'll show you the proof. It's real fun. So, previously Schumer, Feinstein, Obama, and a number of the Democrats were against illegal immigration. 
And I'll actually show you a neat little clip from Georgetown by Schumer in which he talks about how he's against illegal immigration. But in the 10 years since 2009, they've all switched to the other side. They've all done these flip-flops. Why? Well, if you do the math, you will find out that they've had a change of heart. If there's 400,000 illegals with 300,000 Democrats, less 100,000 Republicans, that yields a net gain to the Democratic Party of 200,000 per year from illegal immigration, and even if every one of those 70,000 Americans is a Democrat, which isn't likely, you would still end up plus 130,000 for the Democratic Party. So unfortunately, I feel they're putting their party ahead of their country. Let's go ahead and talk about some of this proof. Over in San Francisco, they distribute over 400,000 syringes monthly. 400,000 a month. They only pick up 275,000 needles at various locations. Nobody seems to know where the other 125,000 end up going. But that's one of the reasons why they have a massive drug problem. I talked about how AIDS is facilitated by needle exchanges. This is actually a map AIDS view of San Francisco. And right here in the Tenderloin, which is the worst part of San Francisco, 7% of their people have AIDS. 7%. One out of every 14 people. That's horrible. In contrast, over in Hillcrest, one out of five. Or I mean, uh, 5,000 out of 100,000. So it's 5%. So it's one and a half times worse than Hillcrest. But Hillcrest is small and this is like much bigger. Many more different area codes. It's a problem. So what does the Catholic Church have to say about this? The Catholic Church has come out and said this is wrong. We need to fix it. Here are some of what they've had to say. This is the Archdiocese of San Francisco. And they say Public societal acceptance of illegal intravenous drug use is to the detriment of drug users themselves and to the rest of society who sees a poor example being set. It's illegal according to federal law. And giving out a mixed message just encourages people to go do whatever they want rather than having a more example being set. It's a violation of federal law. They're setting a negative example. It's tearing apart the social fabric of society. And what they recommend is more drug and alcohol rehabilitation services. They do want to try and treat these people. But they also want to access additional medications. Naloxine, buprenorphine, these can help people to get off heroin, slowly but surely. It, they, go, they have horrible side effects, but not as horrible as heroin. And it can be part of a treatment program. So they don't just want to lock people in jail, they do want to treat them, they do want to help them make better. And they say, we understand that those in San Francisco are handing out the free needles have good intentions, but we have to look at the results, and the results are horrible. So let's not give a mixed message, let's help the addicts, and let's try and fix this problem. How big is the problem? I looked at San Francisco because that's close by. Many of you have seen it, many of you have experienced the homelessness, the drugs, the needles all over. Look at this number, 70,237 deaths in the year 2017. That's enormous, guys. It's enormous. And let me contrast that with what just happened in New Zealand. 50 people were killed. 50 people, Muslims, were killed by some white supremacist with a gun. The media will now spend 1,400 as much hours and time trying to make you all feel guilty if you're a gun owner and make you doubt yourself if you're a white male, then they're going to spend talking about what they should be spending 1,400 times as long talking about, which is the 1,400 times more deaths that we're inflicting upon ourselves through illegal drugs. The media has an agenda, and it's not pro-USA. Let's compare those 70,000 deaths to the terrorist attacks that go on throughout the world. Terrorist attacks throughout the world are 26,000 in 2017. There's close to three times more deaths in America from illegal drugs than terrorism around the entire world. Does the media spend three times as much time talking about that as they do terrorism? No. And in Iraq and Afghanistan, it's only 6,000 only. In Syria, only 2,000. 
In the United States, there's only 95 deaths from terrorism. But I can bet you that when you do the math, the media is not concentrating on where the real problems are if they did the math dividing fatalities by different types of circumstances. So let's take a look at Vietnam. In Vietnam, over this 10-year period, 1956 to 70, well, actually, it's longer than 10 years, but most of the casualties happened in 64 to 73. There's 58,220 deaths over 10 years. Do you guys remember what a stink all the protesters were making about Vietnam? I'm a little young, so I didn't actually grow up during the Vietnam protests, but there was enough carnage going on that I still got to experience it 10 or 15 or 20 years after all of those protests. It was a blight upon our national soul. People were saying, don't go into Afghanistan, it'll be another Vietnam. Don't go into Iraq, it'll be another Vietnam. It was a scary, horrible thing that has scarred our country. And yet, one fourteenth as many deaths as we're now experiencing on a yearly basis from opioid poisoning. Just to re-emphasize this, I put up this horrible graph. And you can see it's growing. It's not got like a little downward shift. It's starting to get that little hockey type look to it. You know, if this was a climate change graph, everyone would be going out and protesting, but instead it's people dying of opioid poisoning. So now we know what's happening to America. What's happening to Mexico? 29,000 deaths last year. Two-thirds of those are drug-related. Two-thirds of those are directly correlated with cartels killing people and fighting over their drugs and who gets to serve a switch neighborhood and who gets to be the mule that carries it across the United States. And extortion. It's a kleptocracy over there. You guys know what a hellhole it is. I don't even go there anymore. It's horrible. I don't trust that I'm not going to be kidnapped and have my fingers ripped off and sent back to my loved ones unless they start giving them money to get me back alive. And they do the same thing to Mexicans. So this isn't just a Mex this isn't just a United States problem. Our money is funding this. The money from our addicts, the money from people who buy drugs, is helping to support these killers, these drug cartels. Now let's look at the total number of civilian deaths in Afghanistan and Iraq since 2007. In Afghanistan, 21,000 killed. In Iraq, 81,000 killed in the last, what, 12 years. Look at this. Mexico is a war zone worse than Iraq and Afghanistan. This is horrible. It's horrible what we're doing. What we're funding. Now, some people say, yeah, but the drugs come in from lots of different sources. We can't just build a wall and hope that we're going to fix it. Well, this shows the drugs that are coming from Mexico and green. This shows the ones that are coming from Southeast Asia. This is the ones coming from South America. And you can see that it does change over time. But recently in 2015, the amount of drugs that are coming from Mexico is almost 90%. It's just too easy to get them over a porous border. And this is from the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration. I'm going to take a video of this, and you guys, if you really question whether I'm making stuff up, you can come and look at the bottom because you'll see exactly where the source material is. So this was an exhibit in the Guzman trial where they got one of the big kingpins that was extradited to the United States because he couldn't be held in maximum captivity prisons because he just kept bribing people to let him out. So he finally got extradited to the United States primarily because his relatives wanted to get rid of him and take over the business for themselves so they threw him like a fish to the United States. But the orange is the Sinoan cartel. You can see orange almost everywhere. The Gulf cartel is here in red and pretty much owns half of Texas for distribution rights for illegal drugs. And then you have, oh, you've got another one. There you go, the Juarez cartel, which has this area. I had no idea how extensive the networks are, and I had no idea the government knew all about them also, but it only comes out in trial when they're trying to take down a kingpin. Since we're here over in San Diego, it's sort of important to see what's happening over here. This is the change in heroin trafficking in the last year. 
It's up 16% in San Diego, 39% in El Centro. It's fallen over in Yuma, that's good. In Tucson, it's up 58%, El Paso, 138%. You can see that they have a good knowledge of exactly what's happening and who the cartels are and where they're operating. This was eye-opening to me. I had no idea that we knew all of these people. Unless you go and read some of these stories that are published in Breitbart, you not even understand the carnage that's going on down at the border. Because it's hidden. Because it doesn't match with the media's agenda. So what does this cost us? Well, let's look at it on an individual basis. $6,552 a year for methadone treatment to get somebody off of heroin. Remember, these were the drugs that were recommended by the Catholic Church. Buprenophone, uh, $5,980 a year. Now, Trexone, $14,000 per year to try and prevent these people from dying. And this doesn't even account for the costs associated with the criminal justice, treating babies born dependent on opioids, greater transmission of infectious diseases like the AIDS that we we're talking about, treating overdoses, injuries associated with intoxication, or lost productivity. When you add all of those up, according to drugabuse.com, which is a government agency, the total cost in just 2013 was $78 billion. $78 billion that our society is paying in all of these costs versus 5.7 to build a wall. And maybe it won't correct 100% of the problem, but what if it corrects 50% of the problem? You'll save yourself 50% of $78 billion for a $5.7 billion investment. And some lives. Let's not forget the lives. So here's a graph that was actually put together by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and it shows the amount of illegals that have been apprehended by the border. And it contrasts it with the unemployment rate. And in general, when we have high unemployment rate, we have falling illegals coming across the border because they can't get easy jobs. And when unemployment rate is low, then they tend to go back up. But that has sort of fallen apart here in the last 10 years. And this graph is used by people who oppose a wall because they say, well, look, we're only getting 400,000 illegal immigrants now coming in. At one time, we used to have 1.6 million. We're getting better at deterring illegal aliens from coming in. Maybe we don't need a wall. But that's still 400,000 people a year who come up, and two-thirds of them to three-quarters immediately go on welfare. Those are the statistics. So they don't go and start new companies. They don't start their own landscaping business. Some of them do, the ones that we like, the ones that we employ, the ones that are you know, in our household. But for every one that we employ, three of them are on welfare, and you and I pay the taxes for that. So this is an interesting graph. This was put together by Pew Hispanic Center of 2012. And this shows that amongst all Hispanics, who identify with a major party, 49% go for the Democratic Party and 10% go with the Republican Party. Those are the ones who identify. For those who lean but don't completely identify, it's 18% Democrat, 8% Republican. And then it goes down here and shows native born and foreign born and virtually all of these categories. See, they even call it unauthorized instead of illegal. Unauthorized, it's 31% Democratic Party, 4% Republicans, because they get most of their welfare from Democratic politicians who want to reward the welfare system and administer it. So, using this information, you can understand why we don't have a wall. We don't have a wall because some people, some parties, are putting their party ahead of country. So let me give you this summary of what I've said. There's a huge drug epidemic that we've seen ourselves in San Francisco. That gives us the local knowledge to know that what I'm saying is happening all over the country might in fact be true. The free needle exchange sends a mixed moral message. You know that. If you tell your daughter, be home by 10 o'clock on prom night, but I'm going to bed at 9.30. Do you think she's going to come in at 10 o'clock, or do you think there's no consequences to coming in at 12 because dad's asleep and won't know? Then she's pregnant. 
Because you can't screw before nine. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We all know that. At least, never mind. <laughs> all right, so there's 70,000 USA deaths from opioid overdoses each year. The 70,000, three times the deaths from terrorism in the entire world each year. I have to repeat all this stuff because it's a lot of information. And I know you guys are starting to lose your interest. The drug cartels are killing 29,000 Mexicans each year. Building a wall would not only save 70,000 Americans, it probably help save the lives of 29,000 Mexicans too. If we really cared about other people, that might be something we'd consider. There's been 164,000 killed since 2007, which is two times the deaths in Iraq and Afghanistan. The grand majority of these opioids are coming across the border from Mexico. Drug cartels have a corrupt distribution network that's tightened around the throats of a lot of addicts in America, frankly. And the cost of this disorder is $78 billion per year in 2013. Let me show you this next graph. I'm going to let you listen. We Chuck must Schumer. create a system that converts the current flow of primarily low-skilled illegal immigrants into the United States into a more manageable and controlled flow of legal immigrants who can be absorbed by our economy. Let me elaborate. The first of these seven principles is that illegal immigration is wrong, plain and simple. Until the American people are convinced that we will stop future flows of illegal immigration, we will make no progress on dealing with the millions of illegal immigrants who are here now and on rationalizing our system of legal immigration. It's plain and simple and unavoidable. When we use phrases like undocumented workers, we convey a message to the American people that their government is not serious about combating illegal immigration, which the American people overwhelmingly oppose. If you don't think it's illegal, you're not going to say it. I think it is illegal and wrong. And we have to change it. <laughs> is that great? I love the 2009 Schumer. I think he's fabulous. What happened between then and now? He did the math. Now, some people have said that walls are immoral. The Vatican, this is the Vatican wall. They said walls are immoral. That looks like a pretty big wall to me. This is Clinton's wall and fence. This is, let's see, this is Obama's wall. Yep, he put up gates in that wall. And oh, this is Nancy Pelosi's wall and fence. So I have a question for you. If, if walls don't work, if they really don't work, do we surround our prisons with drags and, dragons and pixie dust? No. We put walls around them, because walls do work. And if they're moral, why do all the Democrats have them? So, if we build a wall, which I think we should do, will save 70,000 Americans and maybe 29,000 Mexicans. But we must think of this in another way. Every single football game that I ever went to, we talked about protecting our house. We don't let other people come in with their muddy shoes, put their muddy shoes on our couch, piss all over our toilet, vomit in our bedrooms. We might end up doing that, but they are not allowed to do that. We protect our house. We need to protect our house. We need to protect our nation with a wall. But most importantly, we need to protect our souls. Because we've been talking about supply. The demand is still here. And if we can build a wall around our souls and decrease our demand for illegal drugs, all of this would go away without even having a wall. So I started this talking about St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. And I would like to have a quick prayer to end this conversation. I know this is a Catholic prayer, and some of you don't want to participate in Catholic prayers, but I hope that you can be non-judgmental and tolerant. Because I think this we should be building alliances with all of the Judeo-Christian proponents out there and coming together. Because if we don't, we leave a hole the size of God in our nation. And the atheists fill that hole, and the cults like climate change. Climate change, people call us climate change deniers. They're actually border carnage deniers. So, 
Please join me if you can. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. And be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.